So let's talk about Twitter, which has become my favorite social media platform this year. I went from zero to a thousand plus followers in just 46 days. I'm closer to 2000 followers now. And it's led to hundreds of people joining my email list, five figures worth of info product consulting and coaching deals, and also connections with multimillionaires that I met just through Twitter. Now, especially if you enjoy writing, I think Twitter is one of the best, if not the best places to build an audience and grow your business on social media in 2021 and beyond. And in this video, I'm gonna show you the exact steps that I took to go from zero to a thousand plus followers in just 46 days and how you can do it too. So I have seven steps for you today to grow on Twitter. Let's jump into the first one right now. Step number one is to be interesting. People wanna follow interesting people. So how do you be interesting? Well, do interesting things. So maybe you're working on developing a new skill or maybe there's a hobby that you really enjoy or maybe you're building a business and maybe you wanna share your journey, doctor the journey. Those are all things that are interesting to other people. So as long as there is some other group of people that's interested in something that you're working on, which is most likely going to be the case, you can build a Twitter audience and grow your audience by just sharing content and sharing your journey on what you're working on, right? Something interesting that you're doing. Step number two is to pick your three main content pillars. Now your content pillars are everything that you tweet about. All of your content is going to fall into one of these pillars or one of these buckets. Now, how do you pick your content pillars? Well, it's an overlap between something that you're good at or something that you're working on and something that a group of people or your audience wants to hear about. So that's why step number one is so important of being interesting and doing interesting things because that is gonna give you ammunition for your content pillars and what to talk about there, anything that you wanna tweet about and create content around. So my three main content pillars are email marketing, info products, and online business and online business models. Everything that I tweet about falls into one of those three buckets and you want to think about this as well. What is the overlap between something that you're good at or working on and something that other people want to learn more about and make those your three main content pillars. Step three is to build a Twitter profile funnel. Now, what is a Twitter profile funnel? It basically takes someone who is, they have no idea who you are. They're just finding your profile to becoming someone who wants to follow and listen to your every move. So the way that mine looks is I have a bio that talks about who I am and what I do. When someone clicks over, they see that bio, they get interested in learning more. They click over or they scroll down to the pinned tweet and that shows them a little more in depth of what I do and how I can help them. And from there, they give me a follow. They start to see my tweets. They might join my email list. And from there, they might even buy one of my products or services. So that's a Twitter profile funnel, right? Someone who might just be scrolling through a feed, they might come across your profile and all of a sudden within a few actions, a few clicks, they become interested in following you and listening to everything that you have to say. Step number four is to have a consistent posting or tweeting schedule. And this goes for any social media platform, right? You need to have a consistent schedule and you need to stick to it. So for me, I post four times a day at the same exact times every day. I post at 5 a.m., 6 a.m., 8 a.m., and 5 p.m. on Twitter. Now, sometimes I'll go over that and post more, but at the bare minimum, I have at least those four tweets and time blocks booked out every day. Now, I use a tool called Hype Fury, and what Hype Fury does is it helps me to schedule out my tweets so that I'm never scrambling in the morning to type something up and put it into Twitter and make sure that I don't miss the day. So I always have about three to four days to a week scheduled out using the tool, and it really helps me to stay consistent. So if you're struggling with consistency and struggling with figuring out what to write, I highly recommend you pick up a tool like Hype Fury and schedule out a few days so that you don't have to think about it every single day. Another extra tip that I have is I spend 30 minutes every evening, usually around 5 to 6 p.m., just typing out four to five tweets. And then I schedule it in a tool like Hype Fury. And in the morning, I'll spend another 30 minutes editing those tweets and cleaning anything up that didn't make sense. So what that allows me to do is type at night when I'm just not feeling too creative. I just want to get my thoughts out on paper. And in the morning, when I have more of that creative juice and energy, I can go in and make sure that it looks polished and clean before it goes out. So if you want to start scheduling out your tweets with Hype Fury, that's another benefit is you get to sit on it overnight, sleep on it, and make sure that you wake up and have it polished off before you send it out. Step number five is to engage with accounts that are bigger than you. And this is what I did in the beginning. This really, really helped me out was I found accounts that had 10, 20, 30,000 followers that I wanted to build a connection with and I found a way to be valuable and I engaged with them. So how can you engage with these bigger accounts? Well, you can like their posts, right? You can make lists of these accounts that you want to build a connection with and you can start liking their posts every day. You can comment thoughtfully and that means don't just write good tweet, 
right? Uh, bring something new to the conversation, a new insight, a new way of thinking, some kind of value to the thread or whatever you're commenting. The third way is to retweet their tweets onto your own profile. And the fourth way, which is my personal favorite after you've been engaging, is to reach out through DMs and find a way that you can be valuable to them, that you can help them out. So what I did was I jumped on Zoom calls with some of these people and I provided some ideas around info products and scaling their business through email marketing and info products. And I gave them ideas, I gave them insights and they ended up retweeting my account because I helped them out and it exposed me to these accounts with big audiences, 10, 20, 30,000 people. And that got me hundreds of followers, thousands at this point. So that's how you engage with other accounts. You start off by just liking, commenting, and retweeting. And then as you start to do that, you can reach out through the DMs. Don't ask for anything, just find a way to be valuable to them. So if you have a skill that you can offer, maybe you can do something for free or for discounted that you, maybe you saw they have a crappy banner or they have a crappy email sequence. You can offer to set them up with a better one for free if they retweet you, right? Or help you out somehow. So that's a big one right there is to engage with accounts that are bigger than yours and find a way to be valuable to them because they're gonna end up helping you out back by retweeting you and bringing hundreds, maybe thousands of followers to your account. Number six is is to build your own idea factory. And I learned this through a training from uh, two really brilliant entrepreneurs named David Perel and Ali Abdal. I'll link to their training below here. And it was a one hour training where they talked about building an idea factory. Now, an idea factory is a way where you consume information, right? You're watching videos, podcasts, you're reading books, and you're taking all this information and you're using it to give you ideas for your own content. So how you do that is you need to create some kind of capture area. And I use a tool called Notion, where I capture all of my ideas from everything that I read and listen to in this one area. It's a project management tool. And that gives me ideas for creating content around. So for example, I'll read a book, I'll see an insight that really resonates with me. I'll put it into this idea, factory notepad, and I'll use that to create four, five, 10 different tweets. And you can do that every single day. So yeah, creation is important, but so is consumption because by consuming things and learning new things, that's how you are going to get ideas. And that's what this idea factory is, is having a way to capture all the information you're consuming and turn that into ideas for your content. And in this case, for your tweets. The seventh and final step is to always give before you ask. And this is not just for Twitter. This is for everything, right? Anytime that you are asking someone for something, ask yourself, have you given to them first? Have you given to them 10 times before asking something from them? And I get cold emails and messages every day. Please, sir, please help me. I want your courses for free. I want free coaching. I want all this. Why should I help you, right? Why should I give you all this free stuff and take my time to do that for you if you haven't provided anything to me? So if you want someone to help you, make sure that you've given to them first, whether that's engaging with their posts, whether that's offering to be of service in the DMs, whether that is through providing valuable content, right? You always have to give before you ask because no one wants to help a beggar. And that's all you really are if you go and ask just people for free stuff. So don't be a beggar. Don't go and ask people for things that you haven't given to them first. And always ask yourself before you go out and request something, have I given to this person 10 times or more first? And that's gonna help you in every area of your life, not just Twitter, cold emails, relationships, communication. It's gonna make you so much better in every area of your life if you always give before you ask. So those are the seven steps that I took to grow my account pretty fast from zero to over a thousand followers in just 46 six days. And I have zero doubt that if you follow these seven steps, you're going to grow your account fast as well. So if you want to learn more about Twitter growth and monetization, or you just want more tips and tricks around Twitter, make sure that you follow me at Sean Anthony says on Twitter and also subscribe to my YouTube channel here. I'm going to post more videos around Twitter growth and monetization and marketing in general. So if you want more of that, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Also, let me know in the comments. I'm curious, have you already started a Twitter account? And if not, do you plan on starting and growing a Twitter audience this year, 2021? Let me know in the comments, or if you already are growing one, let me know what tip out of this list was the most helpful and useful to you. So that's it for this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope you got value out of this, and I'll see you next week. Take care.